Business Comm class, welcome to Learning Objective 1, discuss the opportunities and challenges of intercultural communications. Firstly, we have to understand what diversity means. Usually, the word diversity is framed in terms of ethnic backgrounds, but the book defines it as all the characteristics and experiences that define us each as individuals. It is very important to remember that in any company, its cultural diversity affects how its business messages are conceived, composed, delivered, received, and interpreted. Here is a helpful tip. In later chapters, you will be learning about something called the three-step writing process. You will encounter this numerous times. Cultural diversity is one of the main reasons understanding and practicing the three-step writing process is so important. Now let's talk about culture. Culture influences everything about communication. This includes five things. Language, nonverbal signs, word meaning, time and space issues, and rules of human relationships. Now let's talk about intercultural communication. Intercultural communication is the process of sending and receiving messages between people whose cultural backgrounds can lead them into interpreting verbal and nonverbal signs differently. Take Ms. Chevelle for example. To her, eye contact is very important when communicating with someone. This is how she knows that we are listening to her. But here in the CNMI, we don't make eye contact with our elders as a sign of respect. Now let's talk about the opportunities that intercultural communications give us. Working with diverse cultures in business is almost inevitable. But don't let that stop you. Working with culture is good for business. Thanks to communication and transportation technology, natural boundaries and national borders are easily passable. Local markets are open to worldwide competition. There is a whole world for businesses of all shapes and sizes, young or old, to potentially grow their business on a global scale outside of their home countries. Thousands of United States business owners everywhere create a lot of revenue through exports. With all this worldly interaction, you would probably have to do a lot of traveling to visit potential clients or business partners. This gives you the great opportunity to learn the proper etiquette of their culture and to simply travel the world and enjoy your life. While intercultural communication has its great advantages, it also comes with challenges. It's much more complicated than simply matching language between a sender and receiver. It goes beyond mere words to beliefs, values, and emotions. Because the way you communicate is deeply influenced by the culture you were raised in, it becomes much more difficult when someone attempts to encode a message using the assumptions of their culture. This can cause misunderstanding that takes away from the progress and time of your business. There you have it for Learning Objective 1. Now let's go take a look at what Learning Objective 2 is all about. Learning Objective 2. Define culture, explain how cultures learn, and define ethnocentrism and stereotyping. What is culture? Culture is a shared system of symbols, beliefs, attitudes, values, expectations, and behavior of norms. When dealing with different cultures, you need cultural competencies. It is an ability to inter interact effectively with people of different cultures. Cultural competency requires a combination of attitude, knowledge, and skills. When you learn culture, you learn culture both directly and indirectly. In addition, cultures tend to offer views of life that are both coherent and complete. Overcoming ethnocentrism and stereotyping. Ethnocentrism is the tendency to judge all other groups according to the standards, behaviors, and customs of one's own group. Stereotyping is a sign in generalized attributes to an individual on the basis of membership in a particular group. Cultural pluralism is the practice of accepting 
multiple cultures on their own terms. You can avoid ethnocentrism and stereotyping by avoiding assumptions and judgments by accepting differences. Learning Objective 3 Explain the importance of recognizing cultural variations and list eight categories of cultural differences. Importance of recognizing cultural differences Culture is a strong part of people's lives. It influences their views, their values, their humor, their hopes, their loyalties, and their worries and fears. Whether you're from Japan or Palau, Saipan or Korea, China or the Philippines, if you are a mixture of cultures, your culture has affected you. So when you're working with people and building relationships with them, it helps to have some perspective and understanding of their cultures. But as we explore culture, it is also important to remember how much we have in common. Contextual differences talks about cultural context, which is the, the pattern of physical cues, environmental stimuli, and implicit understanding that convey meaning between two members of the same culture. There are two types of context cultures. The first one is high context culture, which occurs when a person relies less on verbal communication and more in the context of nonverbal actions and environmental setting to convey meaning. The second one is low context culture which occurs when people rely more on verbal communication and less on nonverbal communication and cues to convey meaning. Cultural context influences legal and ethical behavior, which in turn can affect communication. As you conduct business around the world, you'll find that legal systems and ethical standards differ from culture to culture. Making ethical choices across cultures can seem complicated, but you can Keep your messages ethical by applying four basic principles. One, actively seek mutual grounds. Two, send and receive message without judgment. Three, send messages that are honest. And four, show respect for cultural differences. Social differences explain the nature of social behavior that varies among cultures. Some behavioral rules are formal and specifically articulated, and others are informal and learned over time. Social norms can vary from culture to culture in the following areas. Attitudes toward work and success. Roles and status. Culture and influences. Use of manners. Concept of time. Future orientation and openness inclusiveness. The meaning of nonverbal signals can vary widely from culture to culture. The best advice is to study the culture in advance and then observe the way people behave in the following areas, such as greetings, do people shake hands or bow, or kiss lightly on one side of the face. Personal space. When people are conversing, do they stand closer together or farther away. Touching. Do people touch each other on the arm to emphasize a point or do they refrain from touching? Facial expressions. Do people shake their heads to indicate no or not to indicate yes? This is what people are accustomed to in the United States, but it's not universal. Eye contact. Do people make frequent eye contact or avoid or avoid it? Frequent eye contact is often taken as a sign of honesty and openness in the United States. Posture and formality. Do people slouch and relax in the office and in public or do they sit up and stand up straight? A culture's views on youth and aging affect how people communicate with one another. In the United States culture, youth is often associated with strength, energy, possibilities, and freedom. And age is sometimes associated with declining powers and the inability to keep pace. 
The perception of men and women in business varies from culture to culture. In some cultures, men hold most of or all positions of authority and women are more expected to play a more subservient role. Religion is a dominant force in many cultures and the source of many differences between cultures. Religion brings potential controversy in a work setting. On the other hand, some employees feel they should be able to express their beliefs in the workplace and not be forced to check their faith at the door when they come to work. People whose hearing, vision, cognitive ability, or physical ability to operate electronic devices is impaired can be at a significant disadvantage in today's workplace. As with other elements of diversity, success starts with respect for individuals and sensitivity to differences. In Learning Objective 4, we will list the four general guidelines for adapting to any business culture that can help all business communicators improve their cultural competency. The first guideline is to become aware of your own biases. It's one thing to understand the other party's culture to communicate, we must also know your culture and how you communicate with others. The second guideline is to ignore the golden rule. The saying that one should treat others as one would like others to treat oneself isn't applicable due to the differences of culture. The way you communicate in your culture may be a whole different story in someone else's culture. Guideline number three is to exercise tolerance, flexibility, and respect. In business, companies manage their employees in a way that corresponds to their own culture. The last guideline is to practice patience and maintain a sense of humor. Everyone makes mistakes once in a while and it's best to stay calm and collected when a problem arises and to act in a way that will make the other party comfortable. Learning Objective 5 7 Steps to Improve Your Intercultural Communication Skill Understand Religious and Social Beliefs Learn about economic and business institutions. Appraise the nature of ethics, values, and laws. Step 1. Studying other cultures. Prepares you for interaction with other cultures. Understand social customs. Learn about clothing and food preferences. Assess political patterns. Step 2. Studying other languages. The ability to communicate in more than one language can open up a wider variety of career opportunities. Facilitate communication, in other words make it easier, promote business relationship, the effort to learn common phrases in another person's language is a sign of respect and demonstrates your commitment to the business relationship. Step 3. Respecting preferences for communication style. The level of directness, whether they prefer the direct or indirect method, And the degree of formality varies from culture to culture. Knowing what your partners expect can help you adapt to their style. Step 4. Writing clearly. Clarity and simplicity are essential in writing to or speaking with people who don't share your native language. Choose words carefully. Use precise words that don't have multiple meanings. Be brief. Use simple sentences and short paragraphs that will be easier for readers to process. Use plenty of transitions to help readers follow your train of thought. Address international correspondence properly. Learn about different address elements and salutations. Cite numbers and dates carefully because they are expressed differently in other countries. Avoid slang, idiomatic phrases, and business jargon. Your audience may have no idea what you're talking about. Avoid humor and other references to popular culture. They rely on cultural specific. Step 5. Speaking and listening carefully. Speaking clearly plus getting plenty of feedback equals successful intercultural conversations. Accommodate. Speakers should adjust 
the content of their messages and the style of their delivery to accommodate the needs of the listener. Listeners should be tolerant of accents, vocab choices, and other factors that may distract the meaning of the speaker's message. To be more effective, remember these tips. Step 6. Using interpreters, translators, and translation software. Humans use spoken communication. They help us understand cultural context and nonverbal cues. Computers use written communication. Translation tools can be quite useful with individual words and phrases that can often give you the overall gist of the message. Step 7. Helping others adapt to your culture will create a more productive workplace and teach you about other cultures as well. Offer useful advice in a respectful manner. Simplify the process by looking for opportunities to help people fit in and adapt their communication style. These steps will improve your intercultural communication skills and allow effective communication across all cultures.